All right, so this is a uh, prelude to lesson two, and I, I just want to uh, lay out a couple points for this, and uh, that should help you with this next video um, session that you're going to be doing, uh, which is 17 minutes long, and you're going to have until Friday at 7 p.m. in order to get the, uh, the quiz done. All right, so first off, in all of this energy business, The overriding law of nature that we're dealing with here is the law of conservation of energy. And I know that if we were in class right now and I was to ask you what that is, all of you guys have it memorized. Um, but one of the things that I want to do here is to actually give you the correct law which for whatever reason in basic chemistry classes just they seem not to use it. So this is actually what's called the first law of thermodynamics. All right, and that's how any chemists actually know this law. We don't use the law of conservation of energy much. It's the first law of thermodynamics. Why does that matter to us? Well, not so much right now, but in your, in your future, like when you get to college, the professor's going to talk about the first law of thermodynamics. He's not going to talk about the law of conservation of energy. And the main point here, which I know you guys are all familiar with, is that energy is conserved. All right, and... The, really the point of our little live session today is to explain to you how this actually works. All right, one of the key things about this is to remember that the total, the total energy change that you have um, for any kind of process involves this sum. It's going to be the kinetic energy of whatever's going on uh, plus whatever the potential energy is. The, these two things have an interplay, right? If one goes up, so let's say we have the kinetic energy going up for some reason with something like, you know, if we're melting an ice cube, the kinetic energy of that is going to be going up. And the potential energy of whatever is in interplay with that, therefore, has to go down. So in other words, as these things change, the other one is going to be is going to complement whatever is happening, and and if you think about that, the reason is is because this value over here has to remain constant. This this cannot change because if it does, then what that means is that we violated we violated this. We violated this law. So for any process or chemical reaction, if if there's if one of these things is uh, changing, the other one has to be changing also in relation to that in order to maintain constant energy for the entire for this entire sum. Now, how do how do we work this out? All right, and and lesson two is going to talk to you about the fact that when we study some kind of process that we identify what's called a system and and the surroundings so I want to just define that and the way that we're gonna do it is by uh, defining this as a universe and again here's the situation we we have to know or be able uh, to keep the total energy for something that's happening constant. So we're going to define our universe as being what's called the system plus what we call the surroundings. Now, what is the system? And we've already talked about this in lesson one in a certain way. The system is going to be either a physical change that we're studying. It could be the melting of ice. That's the example I used before. Or it could be a chemical reaction. 
So whatever it is that we're studying, that's always going to be what we call the system. All right, and the surroundings. Whoops, surround, oh yeah. I'm um, sorry, let me just fix this. I've got finger stutter. All right, surroundings is always going to be everything that's around our system. All right, now, I feel like I've already gone on enough about this. So I want to uh, uh, just basically sum this up. So here's the two things that make the universe. And how is this going to work? Okay, so I've just gone to another uh, screen. So we have our universe. And it's going to be equal to our system plus surroundings. So what you're going to see in all of the videos that are coming on energy is that we're always going to draw a diagram. And the diagrams are going to look like this. I might use a, uh, a diagram of circles where the system is going to be the smaller circle that's inside the surroundings. All right, and this whole thing in total is the universe. All right, the other thing that I like to do is I like to use boxes. So we would have this box like this, and then on the inside we're going to have this, where this guy here is the system. And it could be the melting of an ice cube, for example, or it could be a chemical reaction, and then everything that's going on around it. Um, I'm tired too, so I'm making spelling mistakes. So everything that's going on around it is going to be the surroundings. All right, and if and how we make this, in other words, this is the universe is the two things together. All right, is the two things summed together. And this way we can account always for the total energy, right? Because the energy total is going to be equal to the kinetic energy change that's going on inside this universe plus whatever's going on with the potential energy, right? So again, the universe is this whole thing together. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and close the video at this point. Um, I'm, it is recorded and I will upload the link to Teams and also to your website at Chem Doctor. Uh, the lesson two is uploaded along with its quiz and you guys have until Friday at 7 p.m. to get the quiz done. Remember, always firstly go to chemdoctor.org and secondly go to Teams. Always follow the directions that are at chemdoctor.org and ignore any of the funny business that happens on, on the Teams.